My name is Pam Sampson. I am a mom of three, grandma of nine, and a wife of one for 49 years. And I think we'll make it to 50. Um, we have been going to Hope Church for a couple years now. We moved here from Wheaton, and um, we did it in our, quote, retirement years. And we're finding it's taken six or seven years to get used to retirement <laughs> together all the time. <laughs> so I'm Hannah Holmstrom. Um, I am a mom of three girls. Um, I've been married for 18 years. Um, yes, and we've been here in Illinois for three years now. Same here. Oh, look yeah. at us. <laughs> And we are talking about um, the chapter, which is chapter five, the gospel and our transitions. They talk about different types of transitions, um, adding a child to the family, smaller ones like that, and then bigger ones, um, like a, a new child's diagnosis. The one that um, Pam and I have talked about together is one that we're both pretty familiar with, is moving. Mm -hmm. And we've both done it quite a few times. I've done it eight times since I've been married. And you've done. We're on about 18 or 19 times since we've been married. Yeah. That I have married at 19. So. Okay, wow. <laughs> yep. Yeah, so um, there's a little section in the book where she talks about transitions. And she says, from a human perspective, transitions aren't desirable. Instead, they're often marked by pain, discomfort, awkwardness, false starts, and conflict. Transitions can feel like a pointless season sandwiched between the good old days and life's next good thing, but we must get from point A to point B, and the in-between is where God does some of his best work of making us more like Christ. What's been your hardest transition? So our hardest... The most difficult, I guess. Probably the more recent one mm -hmm. was moving here from North Carolina, where we had been for one year. I first had to kind of get used to the idea of doing it again mm -hmm. in such a short time. After a year. Had, um, being yeah. somewhere for a year, buying a house, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, thinking we're going to be there for a while, and then all of a sudden getting into mode of packing up, selling the house, mm -hmm. moving to a new place, mm -hmm. and, you know, starting over again, um, and then coming in. Like I said, I think in my mind, I thought, okay, is this, if this is what God has for me, it's going to be relatively easy. He's going to make things mm -hmm. fall into place. And wow, <laughs> what did you do that? <laughs> that's great. Yes, wouldn't that be I, wonderful? Yes, but it's not quite how it no. played out, and it was much more difficult than I anticipated. And my husband's job was much more involved and time-consuming than I thought it was going to be, and just. The emotional toil of mm -hmm. taking that on and having kids to worry about and having no support mm -hmm. it would it, it's been a big mm -hmm. <laughs> this has been a big one so I also found when we were moving around a lot it was the practical things that would dump me under the water and hold me down there I agree <laughs> it was just the everyday practical stuff and Daily, it would reduce me to tears. Yes, I would be just get them in bed mm -hmm. or in their room, lock the door, <laughs> and run downstairs and just sit. Yeah, and then invariably one of them would get up and be sitting on the stairs and go, "Mommy, <laughs> did Daddy die?" <laughs> No, he's in Japan, <laughs> but he might when he gets home. And also, yeah. yeah. That yeah. Transition for your kids and taking that totally. on as a parent. Mm -hmm. And again, my husband too wasn't out, you know, gone, but he would be wasn't up in, present. Yeah, he would be up in the morning before mm -hmm. they would wake up and mm -hmm. he would come home after, after they were dinner. in bed. So mm -hmm. they essentially <laughs> didn't see him for Day days on it. end. Yeah. yeah. It it became our norm. I remember mm -hmm. when saying like he was gonna meet us for on in the weekends too. He was going to meet us for the parade Senior. downtown mm -hmm. Rockton, and oh, dad's going to meet us later. He's had to run into work for a few hours, mm -hmm. and oh, I'm so sorry he's not going to make it. Oh, we're used to it. Like, <laughs> and that's like, how the conversation did daddy die? <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> Something like that. Yeah, daddy. we're just, yes. So, I guess too, I had to set up my mind frame totally. differently 
to not have certain expectations. Yeah, and I think be, that's key, the expectations. Yes, thing. to be yeah. pleasantly surprised if he would mm-hmm. join us, <laughs> but mm-hmm. not have that expectation because then it just brought in frustration and anger and bitterness towards that situation. So, yeah, and I remember, like you said, it's the little things mm-hmm. that signing notebook folders mm-hmm. and, oh my gosh, we didn't study spelling words and then mm-hmm. feeling like I'm letting my kids down and, yeah, just mm-hmm. those things totally. that are just routine in a normal day-to-day life, but when you are turned upside down and everything's new, each piece, like you said, is Jenga, it just becomes overwhelming <laughs> and, like, too much. The whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, I also learned that some of these things, the need for stability, the need mm-hmm. for, what else did I write down? Yes. S- security, serenity is a big word for me because I don't have it inside. Money, comfort. They became my idols. Mm, my family sure. became my idol because I was pouring everything into it. God was there. Mm-hmm. And we went to one in Sunday school and we did all the good things and I did the mom stuff and all that, but they became idols. Mm-hmm. I sought after them, not God in them. Mm. And that was like, I think monthly I have to learn that. <laughs> <laughs> I have to repeat it. What? Seek first the kingdom. Then these things will right. be added. Yeah. 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 Um, I was reading a book called Everybody Always by Bob Goff. Oh, and wow. I, yeah. Yes. I do. Yeah. <laughs> and so there's a part where he talks about if our life and our identity are found in Jesus, I think we can redefine safe as staying close to him. Mm-hmm. And I think that's, mm-hmm. that's that exactly comfort, right. that peace. Yeah. And says, don't get me wrong. Playing it safe and waiting for assurances in our lives isn't necessarily bad. It just isn't faith anymore, it's right? Not so the, it's not. <laughs> it does those yeah. moments of transition where mm-hmm. there is no stability, there is no mm-hmm. comfort, there is no peace. It feels like sometimes mm-hmm. that those are the times where your faith is being built because mm-hmm. you know that's all you have to rely on is is God's promises and who He says He is, and yeah, it can be a real like refining fire <laughs> for your for yeah. who you are and and what you're putting your faith in and when my kids after they graduated from college I took them each well I take them out regularly anyway but I took them individually to lunch and we sat and talked and one of my questions to them was the purpose of the conversation was to me to apologize to <laughs> because I feel like I really let them know so I said to Stacy, our oldest, honey, this is uh, I. This is your opportunity to talk with mom. Tell me what mm-hmm. you know. And so she had a list of everything I did wrong, and then I did it with my younger daughter. She had a smaller list mm-hmm. of what I did wrong, a few right things, and I said that. Asked my son the same question. He said, "Mom, I had a perfect childhood. I don't know what you're talking about." <laughs> I'm like, "We're your sister." <laughs> Well, that's true because each I, kid handles it so differently. That's the point. Yeah. So you really don't know. And only God does yeah. have uh, the sovereignty in our faith, and His sovereignty is what really is yeah. the key. And trusting key. that He's in their hand. The like, pivot. Mm-hmm. Anything we can do isn't I'm still enough doing anyways, that, Hannah, right? right? <laughs> My daughter's 47, right. and I'm yeah. still going. I mean, if we could just yep. say, yes, you believe in God, you believe in Jesus, you know, have mm-hmm. enough if we could do their faith for them, but it's... Oh, I tried that. Yeah, <laughs> but you just can't. You have to trust that. Oh, I tried all this. I tried yeah. doing everything for them and nothing. So... Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. That, um, so what do you think has been... What feels the most redemptive to you in, the, in one of the transition processes? I think just recognizing my need for Jesus mm-hmm. in it because yeah, you don't mm-hmm. have any other su- like support a lot of the time so that's that's not your... what really knows you yes mm-hmm. so like that's what I had mm-hmm. and that's where I feel like I, I I just gave him everything that I hold it like this yeah just like mm-hmm. I'm mad about this I'm angry about this like I let it all go and I was like this is not what I thought it was going to be. And I'm mm-hmm. mad that it's not what I thought it was going to be. And it's in those places that you recognize your dependence. I have him. a sign in when you walk in my entryway and it says, my sister made it for me. 
and it says in the morning when I rise give me Jesus and that's literally you could ask my husband I'll be laying in bed and I'll be stretching my ankles and my hands and I'm like in the morning when I rise give me Jesus and he's like me too <laughs> yeah but that is literally how that is literally I mean literally how I get through the day now with the transitions going on in yeah. our lives. So, and I pray that for my kids, my grand, you know, all of them. Well, college, looking back you know. now, it's a little more stable. Now mm -hmm. I feel a little more mm -hmm. settled. That mm -hmm. you it's kind of look years. back at that as a mm -hmm. sweet spot, almost of like there that time of God <laughs> of like, wow, I grew. Mm -hmm. Like I see how much I needed the him. Deep roots. Yeah, that, that just yeah. it it really does refine you, mm -hmm. you know, in your faith and. Um, it kind of talks in here about how like when you feel like you're going through such a hard time you want it to mean something mm -hmm. and when we endure for the hope set before us trusting that God has a greater purpose mm -hmm. than the struggle that we see today so knowing that like you said there's no throwaway seasons there's mm -hmm. you know he's using it for his glory and you know our good and it's always interesting to see what that looks like. <laughs> and sometimes it takes a long time to oh, get there. I have but some things from 49 years ago. <laughs> you're you're going to, what? God, why would that happen when you get to heaven? Yeah. Why did we have a baby a year ago when we were married? That does not. I did not plan that. Right. <laughs> it's like. Well, and that too, I think you mm -hmm. recognize kind of how little control yes. you have on things. I'm just getting a handle on that now, and I'm older than that. But yeah, well, I think it's I a lesson you better. relearn all the time, right? Every month. But yeah, that it's week. a constant, yeah. like, mm -hmm. oh, okay, I, I don't have control in this. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a... We're not in charge. Yeah. And it's pretty arrogant that we think... Well, yeah. I'm telling myself. No, it, it is. <laughs> but it yeah. takes sometimes those moments mm -hmm. on your knees oh. to really recognize that oh mm -hmm. God is in control and that any illusion of control I thought I had is, is just that mm -hmm. an illusion um, and it is for his his glory that yeah. we do everything so yeah transitions they're hard and they're good and they're you want to read the quote from oh yeah uh, I um uh, what's her name Anne Anne Boss. Boss. Yeah. Yeah. I give her the credit um, while others run fast, you can just shuffle with perseverance. While others impress you, simply press on. While others stop for the dark, you can run through the dark. The race is won by those who keep running through the dark. And I am all about that. And it feels like right now going through some physical things that are taxing my ability to do almost anything, everything. It's the dark, mm -hmm. but you keep moving. Keep like you said, yeah, that, that step. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's just that little step each day. And in a couple months, I'll be hopefully be able to look back and say, oh, I learned that. Mm -hmm. But not yet. And <laughs> it's hard yeah. in, in, yeah. in those seasons mm -hmm. to have that mindset, right? To oh. know, like, oh, I'm going to look back and this is going to have these wonderful moments that I see. Even though all my stones of remembrance <laughs> say that, I still yeah, don't believe it. It is. It's hard yeah. when you're in it. And, you know, I thankfully agree. God is there with us, regardless of if we recognize that or not. Mm -hmm. and, and if we, like I said, I just cried out to God and was told him all my frustrations and, you know, that I was, this isn't the way it was supposed mm -hmm. to be, you know, in my, <laughs> my plan, plan that I had. Um, yeah, this, the quote in here was, God has a greater purpose in the struggle we see today. And so regardless of how hard some of those transitions are, it's you know, in the book they say, because of Jesus, transitions aren't marked by pain, difficulty, and struggle. They are part of a redemptive plan marked by the sanctification of God's people as they put away old sins and grow in Christ-likeness. In those moments, you are brought down to see who you truly are. I think you don't have some of those, some of the busyness almost. I mean, it's busy mm -hmm. in its own way, but not like um, mindless busyness. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, um, you don't have some of the like other little distractions that you have when you have a more like 
routine life that you're used to. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, it's a busyness in the day of just getting through the day, but it's not as much a distraction busyness. And that is when we, our true, like, inner who we are is revealed in, in those moments of, you know, hard and awkward and mm -hmm. painful. And that he uses us that time to really grow us to be more like him and to trust in him. If we sit and wait. Yeah. But not all of us are given to that. That's true. I am not given to sitting and waiting <laughs> no, for anything. No. But and that's why things... Yeah, that's why it's a redemptive yeah, I know. process. <laughs> it's a process. For sure. Mm. Next week, we are going to be focusing on the chapter of the gospel and our traditions. So we look forward to talking about that. Thank you, Hannah. This was fun. This was fun.